Hey, weed nerds, no-till nerds, this is the Rascal Farmer, and welcome back to the No-Till Lab. Here we are, day 17, with the Mendo Dope and the Zerio Loco. Oh, focus. Mendo Dope over on the left. Zerio Loco, still taller. A little bit more stretchy. This one's still got those crinkly, weird-looking leaves. This one's got a little bit right here. And you always get a couple of tiny ones. Look at that little one. I am going to give them an ounce and a half of water, maybe a couple. That one's definitely getting a couple. That is a big plant. All right, I'm going to pour some water. We'll give them some water. Oh, man, I have been meaning to show you guys this little thing for a long time. This is one of the coolest tools that I have. It's silicone. <laughs> Look at this, ounces, milliliters, tablespoons, and teaspoons. Look at that handle. Check this out. Fits right on a stinking bucket. Looks like it was made for growing, doesn't it? Cool as hell. I think my wife buys this. Well, here in Michigan, it's in Meyer, but Walmart has them. You go into their cooking aisle, and they got a whole section of this silicone crap. You can wash it out real easy. I mean, my God, it's silicone. I can step on this thing and I can drop it and I don't have to worry about it. Look at that, good as new. <laughs> well, before I went and shot some uh, pictures of the green ice, I figured I'd show you the clones. I'm just about to give them some water. I've emptied any of the uh, residual water that is left here in the uh, tray, uh, but I just wanted to, there's no droop on these guys. That is day seven. They are healthy, healthy, healthy. No roots yet, but they look good. Well, everybody is all safe and sound, tucked away inside their grow box. 77 degrees, 55% humidity. Clones are happy. Seedlings are happy. Hey guys, I'm going to tell you a little story here in a minute, but check this out. It's a mini marker for disc golf. I was at the Clio uh, Cannabis Cup, and uh, I was wearing my disc craft shirt, and this dude comes running up out of nowhere and goes, Hey man, you golf? And I said, yeah, and he goes, here, and he stuck it in my hand, and before I could even thank him, man, the guy ran away. But you want to talk about cool, it fits in my little travel bag, and it makes the coolest, coolest little rolling tray, and it glows in the dark. You can literally uh, hit this thing with the LED on your phone and uh, roll in the pitch black around a campfire or whatever else you're doing, wherever else you're doing it in the dark. But uh, it's story time with Rascal Farmer. Alright, smoking blacks, 
I love them. Nice and thin, not a lot of taste of paper. All right, my first crease is kind of going to be a, probably a third of the way up. I'm kind of splitting that paper into thirds. So what is this about this rolling Randall? Well, back in the 60s and the 70s, there was this guy, he got hit multiple times uh, up in northern Michigan for growing. Um, but not only was this dude known for growing serious, serious high grade in the 60s and the 70s. Shut up, chicken. But he was most known for his ability to roll. And I actually got a chance to meet this guy. This table's a little short. When he was an old man. Rumor has it, this guy could roll cigarette size, cigarette style joints every single time. Every single time. Year after year, this guy would win competitions for joint rolling. He had this really, really unique way of making this little pocket in the middle of the paper. And he said that it gave him the ability when he pinched it that he could just sit here and work it back and forth. And it would form this little tube. And he never even had to look at it. It was almost like his fingers took over. Like his fingers themselves had eyes. Like he could literally stare somebody right in the eye and he wouldn't even... No, look eyes. Come on, Daniel son, look eyes. And he never even had to look at it. And it was almost as if his fingers just knew what to do. And they would literally make the tuck for him. And he never once had to look at it. And he could just take and roll. Just cigarette quality joints. Full from end to end. Never once. No. You guys. Never once did he ever have to look at what he was doing. Rumor has it, he had an apprentice. I don't believe a word of it. They say that this kid once won a quarter ounce in a six pack at college for being able to roll blindfolded, never once having to look at what his fingers were doing. Of course, that's just rumor, hearsay, and popular opinion. I don't believe anybody has the ability to roll a cigarette quality joint. Without ever looking at his fingers. Why, that would be ridiculous. Alright, now you guys have all seen this happen before. It's the same thing I do down there in the flower room. How much water am I going to give them? Uh, two of these. Uh, how big is this saucepan? That big, I, I don't know, really. Um, but I am going to take and I am going to pour one of the saucepans of water in. And then I'm going to go around the horn and I'm going to let that, because it's going to bleed. You can already see it bleeding. I'm going to let that just soak in and absorb and break down the surface tension or give the soil the ability to break down the surface tension of the water. And once I go around the horn, then I'm going to give them a second one. I am going to get some runoff when I do this. I always get some runoff. I think a little runoff is good. I don't want any dry spots in any of these pots. I've never been able to give these things too much water. And one of my pots out there in the greenhouse last year, I decided I was going to give twice as much water. So I was given a 20 or a 45 gallon pot. I was given it 10 gallons of water. And I did that for two and a half solid weeks. 
watering twice a week like that while all the other 45 gallon pots got their regular five gallons of water. I noticed absolutely no difference. None. It was like once I got to the five gallon mark, anything above five gallons was totally overkill because it was just bleeding straight through and there was no way that I could saturate those pots to the point where those plants would get any kind of root rot whatsoever. As long as I keep those fabric pots off the god darn ground. The moment I put those fabric pots directly on the ground, I develop wet spots. If you, have, if you lift up those pots and you put your hand underneath, you'll feel a wet spot 24-7. It's almost as if it doesn't dry out. And that's not good. That doesn't happen in natural soil. Natural soil has a tendency to dry out when you're growing right here in the ground. It doesn't stay wet like that. And I've just found that I get better results. Oops. I get better results if I... Where the hell was I going with that? I get better results if I keep them up off the ground and let the air circulate underneath them so the whole pot dries out. Just seems to do a better job. And then I've got that weird green ice in here. Yeah, I showed you those pictures of that, uh, of that green ice. Let me bring that camera in here. I'll give these things a chance to absorb this water. I'll bring the camera in. And... All right. This is my green ice. You saw the pictures of it earlier. Look at the structure of that plant. It's horrible. It's like a freaking cactus. Although I'll tell you what, this thing would be an absolute scrog monster. And I don't do a scrog, but I'll bet you I could put this in a thousand gallon pot and scrog that thing into a 12 by 12 and grow pounds with this plant. It's a big yielder. Now, from the same seed pack, pop just a little while ago, we found this one. And I'm probably gonna put that in a 25 gallon pot just to see what it does. But knowing that the seed run of 14 seeds that I did when I found green ice, there was one male and there were 13 females. Of the 13 females, seven of them auto flowered and good God, they look like a corn plant. There was no bud structure whatsoever. Just little teeny dime-sized things on a bunch of wispy branches. So I killed them. And then over the next few weeks, while I was waiting for them to finish up, of the seven remaining or six remaining females, every single one of them hermed up to the finish except for green ice. Now this is a straight up female, and I like its structure. Way better structure than that. Because picture that structure in a plant that will be the first out of everything that I grow to mold. So it's a pain, you gotta constantly keep on it. It loves to grow outside but it doesn't like to finish outside. I'm kind of interested in that one. But I'm not expecting it to do anything other than herm or auto flower, so. But right now, man, it's tight. That looks right. All the way down. Looks good. So we'll see. 
I have another green ice that's that one's sister that I'm messing around with and I really have to transplant it because it doesn't like it. But talk about different, that one looks like green ice. How about that one? No, that's not a strange seed that fell into the bag. I grow no sativas whatsoever. But I did get that blueberry male before this thing back crossed to itself accidentally. The last cross was a blueberry. That looks like a straight up blueberry female. That's the only blueberry leaning female that I've gotten out of 14, 12, 24. Like 48 seeds that have been run this season. I've been able to collect that female and that female. So don't hold your breath. But just realize that both of those are related to that. And if you look at the intro on this video where I've got my back to you and I'm tending a plant, that's what this cactus son of a bitch looks like when it flowers. But it produces those buds that you saw earlier with that crystal structure you saw earlier. So she's a keeper. She just needs to breed with him. My code black male, which we are going to now take a close look at because out of my last video, I had a subscriber point out, and thank you very much, Red Eyes, that he thought he saw Herm. Now, this has got Forum Girl Scout cookies in it, so I wouldn't be surprised if I saw Herm, but I don't think that what we were looking at in that photo is actually a Herm. Look at the way this thing is, and I'm gonna see if I can come up here and get a picture of this. Depending on which way I look, at that little cluster, it almost looks like you can see hairs. And if I look at it through here, you almost certainly think that you see hairs. But look at the way this thing is growing these, and I don't know what they are. I don't know what the scientific name of those stupid things are. But the little pointy, uh, almost like little stubby leaflets that grow out underneath the uh, calyxes. Let me see if I can find some. Like, here. Dang, I hope that shows up. They're really, really, really pronounced. <clears throat> you get to a spot in the sun. There we go. America. See how pronounced those are? You know what? I am going to throw in a still shot because this sucks. Let me throw in a still shot. Well, here you can see what I was looking at. Those little teeny pointy leaflets that stick out underneath the little uh, pollen sacs. But here, look at the left-hand side of the screen. You look at the left-hand side. Look at that stupid pistol. Can't believe it. Stinking Herm. Look at that. Well, that's it. The death of a code black. Well, that straight up sucks. No wonder that structure looks so much like a female. Damn it. All right, well, now that changes freaking everything. That a-hole has a sister here that was going to go in a 45-gallon pot, and she's got two sisters up there in 25-gallon pots, and I don't trust a single one of them. 
But I got two questions for you. Number one, would you keep them? The two up there and the one here? Would you put this one in a 45 gallon pot? Would you put it in a 25 gallon pot and put it in there? And just realize that you could pick it up and get it the hell out if it herms and watch it like a hawk. But that's a total unknown. A total tester with no history. So what do you do? Well, that's the first question. Where do you put it? 45 gallon pot, 25 gallon pot, or do you just say the hell with it and squash it now and whack it? get rid of it. Question number two. Two. How do I kill it? Alright. Time to hit them up with their last thing of water. And then move it. Damn. Framing is almost 100% complete. You can see I have brought my 2x4 studs down so that this wall is nice and flush. That strengthens up these two by fours. That go all the way up to the ridge. Sturdy as hell now. And the only thing I have left to do is to fill in that piece there. That piece there. That piece and do the same thing on the other side. I do have to make a spot there for the chimney to go out. And I need to frame in a fan that is gonna be up there above that header and then another exhaust right over there in that space there in the center there. Other than that, Man, I love the way this fell together. Trying to get this straight up against the rail. Once I put in those supports to give myself a connection point here, I had to bring something else out on the outside so that I was flush, so that when I roll up my sides, I've got, I'm flush with that beam there and then the corner post. And the only way I could do that was to throw a scab in there, so. Threw one in, did the same thing here, and they just happened to fall right underneath that little piece of 2x2 two two that's supporting those beams. Kind of cool. I love it when it just falls into place the way it's supposed to. Same thing on the front. Yep, I don't think anything's taking this one down. The last one was pretty, but this is going to be freaking epic. All right. Very cool. All right, guys, you know what to do. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm the Rascal Farmer. I'll see you right here next time in the No-Till Lab.